Hey, members who are watching us on BTN TV at this time, I take this initiative to recognize whoever is following this program. On the same side, I'd like to introduce myself for those who have just joined us today. My name is Teacher Fred. I come from Kalumuna, Pujasela District. That is Wisdom Center School. It's where I'm teaching, handling P6 and P5 mathematics. At the same time, Director of Studies. It is a school that is really focused of seeing kids or children perform academically and is, we provide actually a conducive environment which enables a child to compete at a national and international level, not the village level. For instance, what, when I talk about that, I can just give some tips basing on our performance of the school academically. We cannot, I cannot give you analysis of P1, P2, NASA up to P5 because that may be internal and it may not really show you exactly what I may wish to inform you or to update you with. When we use results from our Rwanda Education Board, that is REB results, for us here at national level, we really performed well. We had 90 point five first graders and we managed to get other kids with nine point five second grade and those who passed in the second grade all of all of them got sixteen aggregates only none of them got seventeen and above among those who got division one we managed to get thirty three point three candidates with the five aggregates. Imagine, we are really focused to see that our children move on. Meanwhile, at this time, what enables us as a school to achieve that is the relationship between our parents and the community. Then relationship between also teachers and learners matters a lot. So all that brings us to that kind of performance. And we really recognize our parents outside there for that, what they are doing. However, that is not what we are looking at. What we are looking at, I want us to continue with mathematics. However, when you are a student somewhere, where you are, I would like you also to follow this for your own benefit. More so if you are in upper primary, that is from P4 up to P6. We just wrote it within the same issue. So exam, uh, this same round, I want us to look at ratios. And under ratios, I want us to look at this. First example, actually, we are going to look at how, find, uh, how to find ratios and so on. The first example here says there are 400 pupils at Wisdom Center in Vujasela District. The ratio of boys to girls is four to six. Find the number of boys and girls. They want us to find the number of boys to girls. When you look at this, they have given us the number of pupils who are in this whole school. At the same time, they have given us the ratio of boys. At the same time, they have given us the ratio of girls. Now what they want us to find out is just to find out for them the number of boys at the same time the number of girls who are in the school using the ratios that they have given us. At this time round, we can't tell how many boys are there. We cannot tell how many girls are there. But they have given us ratios to use those ratios to find out the number of girls at the same time the number of boys who are in that school, and which school is that? Wisdom Center, found in the district, according to their question. So let's continue identifying this. First of all, we have to identify the number of pupils. After identifying the number of pupils, 
Number of pupils. That's the first step. I will say number of pupils. Number of pupils in the school. How many? According to the question, it said there are 400 pupils, meaning that the number of pupils in that school, they are 400. So if they are 400, I'll come and say, I'll identify them. I'll first of all identify the number of pupils who are in a class, okay? So if we have identified the number of pupils who are in a class, as 400. Then let's identify their ratios. When we look at the number, they say the ratio of boys to girls is 4 to 6, meaning that boys take a ratio of 4, at the same time girls take a ratio of 6. Okay? Then from there, they say find the total number of boys and girls. They want us to find the total number of boys and the girls. But remember they have given us the ratios of boys and the ratio of girls. So we are going to use the two numbers or the two ratios and the given number of pupils to find out the number of boys who are in class at the same time to find out the number of girls who are also in a class. Okay? So, we shall come, first of all, to find the total ratio. How many do we have? Or how, uh, when you get the ratio of girls, you add on the ratio of boys. Which ratio do we come out with is the first step. So I will say total ratio. Total ratio. Total ratio, when I talk about the total ratio, we are going to get a ratio for girls plus the ratio for boys. Then we shall come out with the sum of the ratio. Is what we are calling total ratio. So total ratio will be four, which boys. At the same time, we shall also add six for girls, which will give us ten. Now we know very well that the total ratio of boys to girls is equal to 10. But how many children or pupils are in class? We are in the school. We have 400 learners or pupils who are in that school. We know 400 stands for the number of pupils. Then 10 stands for the total ratio of boys to girls. Meaning that boys take a ratio of four and the girls take a ratio of six, according to the way how the question is arranged. Now, if it takes that, then it means I will come here and say, for me to find the number of boys, I'll say number of boys. I want to first of all find out number of boys who are in the whole school. Since as per now, we know the ratio that is representing boys as four. And we know the total ratio. The total ratio is 10. So if the total ratio is 10, and we know the ratio for boys, then we are going to multiply it by the total number of learners or pupils in class. And what are that? We shall come and say, boys are taking a ratio of four, according to our question. They are taking a ratio of four, divided by the ratio. Our total ratio is 10, as we have multiplied, divided by 10. So we shall get the, num uh, the total ratio which will be our denominator. Then the ratio of boys will be our numerator. Then we multiply by the number of pupils who are in that school. And what is the number? The number is 400. So we shall multiply by 400 pupils. 
by 400 pupils. Why am I multiplying this? We are finding the total number of pupils who are pairing a sex organ of a male. Okay? We are finding, in simple terms, we are finding the number, total number of boys in the whole school. Then from there, we shall say 4 out of 10 times 400 pupils. I've just copied it. I pasted here. This zero with this zero. After cancelling that, what are we remaining with? You realize that we have 4 times 40 pupils divided by 1. So I'll continue and I'll say the answer will be 4 times 40 divided by 1 and all this will be pupils. And if this becomes our pupils, then we shall have, if you get 4 times 4, it will give us 16. So if it gives us 16, we have 1 0 there. Then we shall add 0 on 16 to make 160. That's simple multiplication. I will say 4 times 4, 16. How many zeros are there? 1. So we shall have 100, 160 boys. They are now not pupils. We are now finding boys. So this will be, this will be 160 boys. Okay? Using the ratio that was given to us, we shall come out and I finally say, Therefore, there are, there are 160 boys in the school, in the school. So when you look at this, you'll realize that Boys who are in the whole school, according to the rules given, they are 160. And after finding that number of boys, get your ruler, come and underline. Underline your answer. Then from there, you will come, now we have two ways to find the number of girls. So we are going to find the number of girls. Finding the number of girls here, when you reach here, we have two ways to find the number of girls. We now know the number of boys in the whole school. And we know the whole number of pupils in the whole school as well. So, we shall get the total number of pupils in the whole school. Remember, pupils in the whole school are of two types of all two kinds, male and female. Meaning that if 160 are boys, it means the rest are girls. So we shall get the total number of pupils in the whole school, which is 400 pupils. We remove the number of boys, and the number of boys are 160. Are 160. We are getting 400. This is the total number of pupils in a whole school. Take away 160. This is the number of boys in a whole school. And what we shall come out with, it will be number of girls here. So I'll say zero, take away zero, it will give us zero. Zero, take away six, impossible. I'll borrow here one, I leave here three. I make this 10. 10 take away 6, it will give us 4. Then you have 3 take away 1, it will give us 2. Then I'll come here and say, there are 4, the number of girls, there are 4, there are, there are, 
240 girls in the school. Then from there I'll get my ruler and I underline my answer. I'll come, I get my ruler, then I underline my answer. If you don't want to use this method to find the girls, with the girls we can use two methods. This was method one. Method one. We can also look at method two. We can also look at method two. Method two, we shall come here and look at the ratio given to girls. We know very well that four is the ratio given to boys, meaning that six is the ratio given to girls. So we shall come here and say, girls, girls will be equivalent to six out of the total ratio 10 times the number of pupils in a whole school which is 400. Six is a ratio given to girls according to the question. Divide by 10, 10 is the total ratio of girls and the boys. Times 400, 400 is the total number of all pupils in the whole school. So if 400 is the total number of the whole school or the total number of pupils in the whole school, we shall now multiply it by that 400, which will give us 6 out of 10 times 400. And here we are struggling to find the number of girls. So we shall cancel out from here. This zero will go with this zero. Then from there I will say we have 6 times 40, which will give us 240 girls. 6 times 4, 24. Then we added the 0, which will give us 24, 0, meaning we shall have 240 girls. Then finally I will say there are 4, there are there are uh, 240 girls. There are 240 girls. I get my ruler. I'll get my ruler. And underline. Get my ruler and underline. After underlining, I'll call it my answer. So once you are given the ratios with the total number, you have to put this in mind. The first thing to do, those are shares. Those are shares, shares of ratios. When they give you such a number, just first of all, find the total ratio. And after finding the total ratio, get the first ratio out of the total ratio times the given amount or the given number. There you would have got the first share. Then the second share, Get the second ratio divided by the total times the amount. You'll get the second share. Even if they have given you three ratios, add all the three. Then divide by the total times the amount. You'll find out that every share, and when you get the two shares, you add them, or the three shares, according to the ratios they have given you. You consider the number of ratios. If they have given you two ratios, like in this case here, we have the first ratio has given us 160, the second ratio has given us 240. If you find out very well, you realize that when you get 160 plus 240, you come out with 400. Now, when you add the shares, what you have got from shares, it must give you the total amount of the number, the original number that they have given you, the number that you are sharing them. Like here we had 400, so we shared among boys and girls. Boys went one side, girls also went the one side, meaning that we had the two shares. So when you get the first shares, 160 plus 240, you'll come out with 400 pupils who are already here. Meanwhile, as for those who have just joined us, 
who did not start with us at the beginning, I request you not to miss this. What you do is, in case you still need this kind of work, just go to YouTube and subscribe these journals of BTN, YouTube, Twitter account, find from their Facebook, find from their Instagram, find from their Twitter. At the same time, you can also find from Wisdom Center website. That is Gujasera District in Kalumuna. Then, uh, on addition to that, this was my first example. Let's also move on. We go to the second example. We see what is the relationship between the first example and the second example. Let's look at the second example. The second example says, the second example says, express one out of nine, two, three out of five as a ratio. We want to express the two fractions as a ratio. How can we express the two fractions as a ratio? The first fraction and the second fraction. When we are dealing with the fractions and the ratios, we need to consider their denominators so much. Their denominators have a meaning that they are teaching us. Their denominator have a meaning that we are supposed to adjust on something. So, in simple terms, when we are dealing with the ratios and you come across the word two, this word is simply represented by these signs, meaning ratios. The two signs means two, and this two simply means these two signs. Full colon in ratios, we refer it as a two. But in English, you call it full colon. For this case, we shall not consider it as full colon. At this same round, we shall consider it as two. So I will come and go for the whole question the way it is, as two out of nine, two, three out of five. And let's look at that. We want to find this or to express this or to change this to ratios or convert everything, these fractions, into ratios. What we shall do, this will be equivalent to two out of nine, two. These two signs or these ratios simply represent, uh, represents this word two, which you say two out of nine, ratio two, three out of five. That's already the ratio. But we don't want to be with the fraction. So what are we going to do? We are going to look at our denominators. When we look at our denominators, we have nine and five. If we have nine and five, but we don't want to have a fraction, we are going to look for the LCM of the two denominators and we multiply that LCM on either sides. By multiplying with the LCM on either side, we are struggling to make sure that we remove the fractions. So we are required to look for the LCM of five and nine. So we shall come aside and we look for the LCM first of all. We shall say LCM of nine and Five. Let us look for the LCM of those two numbers. Those two numbers, I'll come here. I'll say my nine and my five is here. I'm going to use a ladder method such that we find the LCM of nine and five. Let's look at this number here. When you look at the two numbers, the nine is the first denominator of the first fraction. The five is the second denominator of the second fraction. Then from there, we want to look for any smallest factor that can divide the nine or five without giving us a remainder. If they were all even numbers, we would divide them by two. 
But when we look at the two numbers, they are not even numbers. They are all odd numbers. So let us look at the first number, three, nine. Nine divided by two, it gives us a remainder. So meaning that nine cannot be divided by two exactly. Then when you look at five, five is not a multiple of two, meaning that it cannot be exactly divisible by two. Meanwhile, at the same time, nine is not also a multiple of two, hence it cannot be divided by two. Let's go to another factor. That is now three. If the next factor is three, Let's check it. 9 divided by 3. Can it divide? Yes. Because 9 is a multiple of 3. But when we check 5, 5 is not a multiple of 3, meaning that we shall not divide 5. We should, let's start with the 3. We shall say 9 divided by 3, 3. 5 divided by 3, it is not divisible. So you leave it. You, don't, you just carry it, but you don't divide it. Let's come to the next. When you look here, still on the two numbers, 3 divided by 1 of these numbers. And when you get 3 divided by 3, we shall have 1. 5 cannot, so we shall bring it the way it is. When we reach here, you realize that 5 is not a multiple of 3, not a multiple of 4. It is a multiple of 5 itself. So we shall also divide by 5. When we divide by 5, we shall say 1 divided by 5, we shall cut 1 the way it is. Then we say 5 divided by 5, it will give us 1. Then from here, we shall come and multiply all the factors that have divided these numbers by saying 3 times 3 times 5. We are finding the LCM. When you look at 3 times 3, this is 9. 9 times 5, that is 45. That is 45. So the LCM of 9 and 5, it is 45. We are now going to multiply LCM on either sides of the fraction, such that we divide and we do away with the fraction. Just come out with the whole numbers. So here I'll come and have 2 out of 9 times a ratio 3 out of 5. We are now multiplying either side by LCM, which is 45. We shall say times 45 times 45. We shall say by 9, 1. By 9, 5. By 9, 1. By 9, I mean by 5, 1. By 5, 9. Let's see. Here we have 45. Here we have 9. When you get 9, divide by 9, you get 1. 45, divide by 9, you get 5. Let's come to side. 3 out of 5 is the time was 45. We have said divide by 5, you get 1. 45 divided by 5, you get 9. So I want us to multiply this to come out with the ratio. The ratio will be 5 times 2, it will give us 10. Ratio, remember we are maintaining this, five, 3 times 9, it will give us 27. Then this becomes our ratio. After getting that ratio, get your ruler and underline the statement. Confirm that you have completed. So, when you come to this, we shall say, we shall say, I'll extend this and say, therefore, 2 out of 9, 2, 3 out of 5 will give us, we have multiplied this, it has given us 10, treasure 27. Then after getting all that, we underline our answer. We shall have to underline 
our answer. And those who are following us, please take this serious and follow it keenly. As we those who have just joined us on the way, please, if you need to have the same piece of work, just visit on Wisdom Center website or subscribe BTN channels, check on their YouTube, check on their Instagram, check on their Twitter accounts, and so on. However, let's continue with the example three. What is example three saying? In primary six class at Wisdom Center in Vijayasala district, learners have 88 pens and 44 pencils. Find the ratio of pens to pencils. So they want us to find this. They have given us the number of pens this class is having. At the same time, they have also given us the number of pencils that the whole class is having. So they want us to find the ratio of pens to pencils. What do we do? When we look at the numbers, we said, I said earlier alone, that the word two in ratios, the word two in ratios simply mean these two dots. And these two dots, in English, we don't call them ratios, we call them full column. But for this case, we shall refer them to ratios. And we read it as two. So let's look at our question. They have said which pens, they have pens, the items first of all. We shall have the first item as pens, ratio two. The first item, pens to pencils. To pencils. We are getting the first item. We express it as a ratio to pencils. And the first item as pen, pens, how many are they? When we look at the question, it says they were 88 pens. So I'll come where there is what pens, I'll write there 88. Remember they are pens. So if we have 88 pens, these 88 pens, will be expressed to the ratio of how many pencils? We have 44 pencils. To the ratio of 44 pencils. Okay? This is the same as saying 88 to 44. And the sign two simply mean, uh, the word two simply mean the two signs. The sign, the word two simply mean the two signs. So I'll come here and say, we shall have 88 ratio to 44. First of all, this is our ratio. But when you look at the ratio, it can be simplified because 88 and 44, they have a relationship. They are all even numbers on addition to that. So what does it mean? It means we can look for a factor that can reduce these ratios into a simplest or the simpler form. Okay? Meaning, if I look at 88, I'll get my 88 divided by 44. Why am I doing that? I'm just dividing to see that I come out with the simplest fraction, our simplest ratio, or the smallest ratio. 88 and 44, they seem to be big, yet they can be divided 
uh, to come out with the simplified one. Now when you look at 44, it goes into 88. So I'll say by 44, 1. By 44, 2. This will be the same as the first fraction was expressed as a numerator. So if the first fraction was expressed as a numerator, then the first ratio is supposed to be a numerator. So it will be expressed as 2. 2. The second ratio was expressed as a denominator. So the, small, the simplified ratio should be the second. So it will be 2 to 1. Then I will come here and say, there are four, uh, there are four pens, two pencils, two pencils will be equal to two, one. We have now expressed our ratio in the simplest way. And this is the last step. After getting my ratio, I will get my ruler, after getting my ruler, I will underline my answer. I underline using a ruler purpose, you know, to make my work dirty. I want to make my work to look neat. When it appears in it, it really, it really, it really looks nice and it doesn't give hard time to the person marking you. However, as we wind up with the lesson, I would like also to give you some assignment for the candidates and other P5 members, P4 members, more so those ones in the upper primary who are watching us. I would like to give you some little activities that you can also go through using your pen and using your book at home, just like we agreed earlier on, that you'll have at least a small book somewhere where you'll be noting this work, and then when the schools open, you get back with the, your work, you reach the teacher, you present your work to the subject teacher that is teaching you mathematics, and the teacher will help you to understand more in case you have failed any number. So, today's activity, but uh, before I go to today's activity, I would like to say, whoever I wanted to access this work, but you came in a little bit late, please, you can also access it through BTN journals. That is to say, YouTube, Twitter accounts, we have, they have Instagrams, Facebooks, or else you can also visit the Wisdom Center uh, Facebook and uh, their website. You will access the same work. Meanwhile, for the personal comments about the lesson, you can also reach me, just use fire WhatsApp and you comment where necessary using this very number. You just send your comment where you feel like we need to adjust or reduce, just comment by using this number. Put your comment there, we shall access it. I don't need direct calls, please. However, with the activity, let's look at it. The activity number one says, what is the ratio? What is the ratio? What is the ratio of 10 minutes to 30 minutes? That is our first question. You, they want you to express these minutes as ratios. 10 minutes to a ratio of 30 minutes. Let's continue on number two. Number two said, express one out of two to one out of five as a fraction. Not as a fraction, should be as a, a ratio. They want us to express as a ratio. They want us to express that fraction as a ratio, not a fraction. Express it as a ratio. So they have given you fractions. They want you to express the fractions as ratios. Then lastly, they have said there are 45 pupils in P6 class. 25 of them are girls and the rest are boys find the ratio of boys to girls. That is our last number, and it doesn't mean that you should end here. You can also make more research in other books. You can also use uh, question banks to access more questions related to this and work them out. After working them out, please reach your subject teachers. They will help you to solve out this. 
However, as I wind up with my lesson, this is my advice to you, the viewers. Please stay at home as it is advised by the government such that we may overcome this epidemic disease. Stay blessed as you keep on watching these lessons. Always every day at 9 a.m. we shall be having mathematics and at 3 p.m. we shall be having science. Stay blessed as we meet tomorrow.